Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1040. Hey, if you want to download this workbook 1039 to 1040, click on the link below the video. Hey, we have a great video here. We're going to talk about taking a list of numbers and with a formula extracting a unique list of numbers and then present them in sorted order. Now, in my new book, Control Shift Enter Mastering Excel Array Formulas, Chapter 19, covers this topic, extracting unique lists and sorting. Now, for numbers, it's much easier than text or mixed data. Now, I have a bunch of um, examples in the book and some helper columns and even a really wild formula for mixed data. Uh, so I don't have a formula in that book for numbers. I should have put one in. Uh, but and it, it's the easiest of all of the different types of data types to create. All right, now the first thing is we're going to use the frequency function, and we're going to count how many unique numbers there are. Now, there's a couple ways you can count unique items. You can use the count if for the frequency in the book in chapter, I think it's 17, I cover that. In general, frequency is going to calculate faster. I'll show you a count if example in just a moment. But the way frequency works is there's data. You give it a bunch of data, and then you tell it the bins. That's just the categories to count within. And because the frequency function will ignore duplicate categories, there's a great trick. All you do is you put into the data array, control shift down arrow. I actually already gave that a name. That's uh, uh, defined name values. So, But notice, data array and the bin array gets the exact same values. Now what this will do is because there are duplicates over here. We can already see 43, 43. I think that's there's only two 43s in the list and a single 41. Because there's duplicates here in the bins, that means count all the 43s. It'll get the count here, but it will get 0 here. It will ignore it. So check this out. What are we going to get when I highlight this? And I'm going to hit the F9 key to evaluate. We get a 2 in the first position because there's two 43s. But we get a 1 for the 44 because there's only one 44 in the list. But any other 43s will simply get 0. Now. Anytime, oh, so what we did is we evaluated. We, this creates an array of values. They're either 0, meaning it's a duplicate, or some count. So, so we're going to put this inside of the if. The if will interpret any non-zero number as true and any of the zeros as false. So watch this, Control Z. I'm simply going to say the sum function. And then inside of the sum, I'm going to say if. And remember, the lot. this frequency spitting out numbers and zeros and positive numbers. So it'll be a series of trues and falses. The zero will be falses. So I'm simply going to come here, comma, and what do I want if it's true? A 1. I'm going to leave this value of false empty, so it'll put a false in. What it's doing, this if, it's transforming the numbers and zeros to ones and falses. So now when I highlight the if, and hit the F9, we get an array, a resultant array of ones and falses. Now, what is the sum going to do? It's going to ignore the false and add the ones, Control-Z. This is an, an array formula. We have an array operation in the logical test. And so this formula requires the special keystroke, Control-Shift, and Enter. So we have 25 values. Now, the inside part of this it will be the inside essential part of our data extraction formula. Now, one thing I should have mentioned earlier, if, if we didn't want a unique list, we could just use the large or small function, and it's easy to sort a list that are, have numbers. Um, but we want a unique list. We're gonna, I'm going to show you a 2000 and Excel 2010 solution that will work in 2010 and 13. And then over here, we'll see that it's slightly different for 2007 or earlier. I'm going to use the aggregate function. Aggregate function is great. It allows you a bunch of functions. 14 to 19 allow array operations. I'm going to use the large. I'm going to take this large right here, put it as the function number. So we're going to look through, get the biggest one, which I think is 50, and then the next biggest one, the next biggest one as we copy down. We're going to have errors in our array operation. So I'm going to use 6 for ignore errors. And here's the trick. Right here, I'm going to take the actual whole list of numbers, that's all of them, and I'm going to divide by. Well, if I were just to divide by this frequency, that frequency has, and it, let's highlight it because it's worth looking at right here, counts and zeros. I'm going to hit F9 to evaluate. Well, that wouldn't work. We can't divide that 
number we want by 2. But we can convert this arrays of counts and zeros to trues and falses by simply saying, hey, are any of you, and here's our comparative operator, greater than 0. Now we can convert that frequency of numbers and zeros, F9, to trues and falses. When we take these, when you divide by the true, it'll be just like dividing by 1. Notice that true represents the first 43. That false represents the second 43. So it's a really clever way of creating an array of only each number listed one time. So Control-Z. I have to put a close parenthesis because we want to force that comparative operator to calculate before that divide by. I'm going to highlight this and hit F9, and there it is. That's just filtering out all the numbers so we have an exactly one occurrence of each number. There's the 43, but we get a divide by 0 there. The 6 will tell the divide by 0, hey, don't worry about it. So it won't mess up our formula. Now all we have to do is come here, and our k needs to be 1, and then 2, and then 3 as we copy down. So I'm going to use the number incrementer. It's a formula element that will increment the numbers 1, 2, 3 as we copy it down. I'm in C5, so I'm going to put C dollar sign 5 to lock the 5, colon, but not this 5. It'll be an expandable range. Rows will say how many rows 5 to 5 is 1. But when it copies it down, that'll turn to 6, which will give us a 2, then a 3, et cetera. That formula right there. Now, why do we use aggregate instead of the large function? Because aggregate allows us to make an array calculation here without using Control-Shift-Enter. So I Control-Enter. I don't see any curly brackets up there. I'm going to copy this down. You would have curly brackets if you used Control Shift Enter. Now, of course, we're going to get a num error here because the that's at the position where large inside of aggregate is trying to get whatever number that is, and there isn't one, right? Because it ran out of numbers. So we need to turn the formula off when it gets past here. Now. We could, and 10 videos ago or so ago, and in the book, I emphasize this a lot. You don't want to use this method, because th this method relies on running the formula value there every single time. Well, for big array formulas, down here and here and here, we don't need to run it, because we're done. We don't need to run it. But the if error would have to run the whole aggregate frequency array calculation to determine whether to put nothing in the cell or run the formula. So instead of if error, we use if. And then I'm going to use that same rows trick right here. This is our number incrementer. I'm going to say, hey, that anytime 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 as we copy down is greater than our 25. I'm going to lock the row. Then what do we want? There's our logical test. Comma, then what do we want? I'm going to put the syntax for show nothing, double quote, double quote, a null text string. Otherwise, run the formula. What's so cool is past row 25, it's not going to run the array formula. Control Enter, double click, and send it down. All right, so that's, that's a good way to go. We have a count here. We had to use Control Shift Enter. Here, we uh, have a formula that doesn't require Control Shift Enter. It, extracts a unique list and gives us the number sorted. By the way, what would we use if we wanted smallest on top? Instead of 14, we use 15 for small. Over here, if you wanted to use count if, no problem. On small data sets, it's fine. But on big data sets, it takes a lot longer than the frequency alternative we saw. And here, it's about the same formula. It's just using large and then an if, the frequency. And if we get any. Um, numbers not 0, then it dumps the values into the large. Similar logic there. All right, uh, we'll see you next trick.